Hi there. I'm Jan Hall from Folk Roots Radio. Great to have you join me for another Folk Roots Radio Live. Yes, that's right. Folk Roots Radio Live is now a thing. I'm just really excited to be here. Um, you know, it, it really does. I think I've said this a couple of times since I started doing this, but it's just like being on the radio in the good old days at CFRU in Guelph. Uh, when we had lots of people coming in and out all the time, I was very new. And so I had to try and work out how to use all of the equipment. And I always remember sometimes it was like, ah, how can I remember how to do everything? But um, it really feels like that. I can't believe it. I'm just great to be here. Uh, I'm really excited about this because uh, since I started doing this a couple of weeks ago, I think I just had one person with me. Well, today I'm going to be joined by five different people, which it's a little scary um, just to make sure that the technology performs as well as its operator. Well, let's be honest, the operator performs as well as the technology. But we're going to have fun. We're going to be talking about the 2021 Hillside Festival Girls and Guitars Songwriting course. We're going to be joined by facilitators Marie Zimmerman, who is the executive director of the Hillside Festival, and Guelph-based singer-songwriter Doris Falkins. She is uh, the other facilitator for the course. And three of their students, we're going to be joined by Hallie McEwen, Missy Bauman, and Tanya, Do Tanya Joy. It's going to be a great conversation. They're also going to play live for us. It's videos they actually prepared for Hillside Inside, which uh, they were fortunate to play out this year. So it's going to be lots of fun. So please stay with me for the next hour. We've got lots of great stuff coming up on Folk Roots Radio. But before we get there, I thought we should try and squeeze in a song from Doris Falcons. Doris Falcons is a great singer-songwriter. We're going to listen to one of her wonderful songs. It's entitled Lonesome in the Grave No More, an absolutely fabulous song from her first album, a self-titled album from 2018. Just an absolutely beautiful song. Doris Falcons, Lonesome in the Grave No More. And you're listening to Folk Roots Radio Live. Well, I once lay six feet deep beneath the shadow of a northern pine. A wooden cross marked my spot. I was almost forgotten and lost. Now don't go tell it. The village priest, my brothers came up with a plan. Cause my plot wasn't fair, it wasn't just, and they began to dig me up. And lonesome in the grave no more. Lonesome in the grave no more. You won't find me where I used to be. Lonesome in the grave no more. Where I used to be 
That was Doris Falcons with a wonderful Southern Souls version of Lonesome in the Grave No More. Please welcome to Oakwoods Radio Live today, Doris Falcons and Marie Zimmerman. They are the facilitators for the wonderful Hillside Festival Girls and Guitars songwriting course. Great to have you guys join us today. Thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I think it's two years actually since we got to do this. The last time uh, we were just able to do it uh, on radio, but through the wonders of, I was going to say the wonders of COVID-19, and I shouldn't make jokes about it because obviously it's a, tra it's a tragic situation, but I always keep saying that in these tragic situations, there's a little light that shines through. And I think one of the things that has been a blessing for all of us is the fact that online video technology has really ramped up um, since we all went into the pandemic. And talking about um, doing things virtually, you actually ran this year's course virtually, didn't you, Marie? Yes, we did. Doris and I um, facilitated seven uh, students in the Girls and Guitar Songwriting course. So we would meet on Friday nights for a couple of hours. And um, yeah, it was kind of interesting. We weren't really sure how it was going to go because we've been running this course for five years now and uh, it's always been in person and people would drive uh, to the Hillside office from Toronto and Kitchener-Waterloo and all over the place. Um, but we had never uh, done anything um, like that on Zoom. And given that, you know, songwriting is a pretty uh, personal uh, thing, we wanted to create a really safe space for people and we're able to do that in person. We just weren't sure that people that would translate really well online. Now, can I step back a little bit? I should ask you about Girls and Guitars generally, because I think that program started in 2011 at Hillside Inside. Uh, do you want well, to just explain why Hillside decided to, to develop the Girls and Guitars program and then um, yeah. you know, how the songwriting course fits into that? Well, it started in uh, 2010 when we sort of did an audit or a review of our own um, programming practices and that of the industry. And we found that women were generally missing. Um, so the ratio of um, uh, men to women is about 70, 30 in the music industry as a whole, at least it was in, in 2010. And that's a very long standing statistic. It's a very stubborn one. And so there's systemic sexism obviously in, in the industry. Um, but um, the percentage of women across three creative roles was something that really struck me and that 21.7% are artists, 12.3% are songwriters and only 2.1% are producers. So there aren't a lot of women. And I think culturally we have the sense that there's tons of women out there because there's Beyonce and you know, all of these great women, um, but they are, they are the, the exception. And so we wanted to, to change that. So we started um, uh, in the schools actually, um, putting professional uh, singer songwriters who were women in the schools to teach songwriting to young people. And um, that was very successful. And so that began in 2010 and then the stream two um, began, well, we started trying to um, showcase women at Hillside Inside. So that really blossomed in 2014 and we've been doing it since then. So about seven years ago. And then the third stream is the songwriting course, which began in 2016. So five years ago. And uh, some of those uh, songwriting students have uh, really come into their own power and um, they have produced um, albums and so on, Missy Bauman being one of them, um, Moscow Apartment. Um, the two young women came to us when they were about, were they about 14, mm -hmm. Doris? Yeah, yeah. they were 14 years old and they, they came together uh, from Toronto to our course. and and. Yeah, you know, now they're a really big name. Um, so yeah, so we're very proud of the course, but mostly we're really proud of the students. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Doris, you've been involved from the beginning, haven't you, in this songwriting course? 
Yeah, yeah. When I moved to Guelph, it was one of my ways to connect with the music community there. And I had just, in 2014, I finished a songwriting um, course through Berklee College of Music, and it was my way of connecting and sharing that knowledge and and helping. Yeah, I just have this passion for helping young women access creativity and learn some skills that, that they can write songs that they're proud of. Mm -hmm. And I, I think you both have different roles, right? Um, obviously, Doris, you are a songwriter, but I think, um, Marie, you're more involved in the creative writing side of things? Yeah, I guess you could say that for sure. Um, uh, I am a creative writer, and uh, so I do tend to focus on, on the lyrics and uh, on motivation. Um, but I think, you know, Doris and I are a really good team because uh, she's got the full gamut of talents and strengths in, in this area. So um, I, uh, I hope, I, you know, I hope I chip in in an important way <laughs> in these courses. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this time, I mean, it was virtual. Um, you know, this is what the fifth or sixth time you've run it. Um, quite a lot different. I think what four Friday nights in January Mm -hmm. um, I guess because we, you know, I mentioned uh, at the start that, you know, we have all been getting a lot more used to, to technology and what, what it can do from the point of view of online interaction, uh, live streaming, meetings and everything else. Mm -hmm. How successful do you think it was to actually have to do a songwriting course virtually? Yeah, I, well, I can, I can start off. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I was a little nervous about how it was going to go, if people would feel comfortable getting involved. I find that um, teaching in person, we tend to encourage each other and feed off each other a bit, and it's hard to to recreate that online. But um, they were a great group of students and really got involved in, in contributing their ideas and thoughts online. But uh, I have to say, like I, I did miss the final live performance. That's a highlight for me. Typically, at the end of the course, um, the girls will play at a venue in downtown Guelph and um, play their songs live to, live to a very receptive audience. And not mm -hmm. having that experience, I feel, is a little is a little less rewarding. Mm -hmm. They did get to be part of Hillside Inside. Hillside has kindly lent us the videos. Uh, from that to, to, to show today. Um, Marie, do you have any other comments about working on a course like this virtually? Well, um, I don't know about you, Jan, but I'm in Zoom meetings um, every day for hours and hours. And I've discovered like over the course of um, the year that people do tune out after a while. And um, some people, you know, suddenly turn off their cameras and <laughs> you don't know where they are, where they've gone. Um, so, so yeah, the, that it's not a, a perfect sort of uh, communication uh, medium because uh, what you're missing is the body of the person. And um, so, you know, um, that we found in person was, was so important that pe you can feel the, the visceral support that people are giving you when you're in the space in the Hillside office and we're all working together. So I think that, that what I was most proud of was that the students really stepped up and would complement each other and encourage each other in in that space. And uh, and like I said, you know, creating a safe space online, uh, we weren't sure that we were, were going to be able to do that. But I did find that that uh, the Zoom meetings ended up having a kind of intimacy that surprised me, um, and people did take risks. And uh, so I felt really good about it in the end. No. But yeah, I did. I did miss the final performance. But wow, their videos went over extremely well. Yeah, yeah, I was certainly very impressed. But I, I got to say, I mean, Hillside Festival is a class act, uh, pretty much in everything. Not just, you know, being a festival that truly walks the talk, uh, but you know, bringing all of these wonderful innovations together. I imagine that uh, there will be another Girls in Guitars program with a songwriting course next year? I mean, this is a, a long-term commitment for the festival? Absolutely. Like I said, we've been doing this since 2010, and, and our aim has always been to correct the industry. So we ourselves have corrected um, that on our own stages, um, made sure that it's at least 50% of uh, 
women-led um, bands and uh, and acts. So we feel really proud of of that. We would just like to see more change in the industry in general because women tend to be peripheralized. And I think that because of the success of people like like Beyonce, we don't really notice that everybody behind the scenes, all the music critics, all the producers, they're predominantly male. And ultimately the reason we started this is because our research showed us that, that um, uh, young uh, men and women are neck and neck as children taking music lessons and, um, and practicing and so on. And then when it comes to the teen years, uh, women drop off, young women drop off. And so we asked ourselves, why is that happening? You know, um, and so we wondered if it was a question of modeling, you know, that they don't really see women in the industry. So they don't see themselves as, as being that person who can, who can go up on stage or struggle through or whatever. So we're hoping just to create some kind of groundswell, uh, quietly championing the power of, of women, women's creativity because women write very different songs we learned. And, um, and that was incredible, you know, that, that women don't write traditional love songs. So the first course that we ran, we had a student named Carolyn Ross who wrote a love song to her, her young child. It was a two year old boy. Um, so yeah, we, we've, uh, we're trying to make change. We're trying to give them a space and uh, give them a voice to say the things that they may not be comfortable saying, but they really want to put into a piece of art. Well, it's a great program. We're lucky to have three students from this year's program with us. They are Hallie McEwen, Missy Bauman, and Tanya Joy. We're gonna hear from Hallie McEwen just now. Doris and Marie, don't go anywhere. We will be chatting with you a little later. You're listening to Folk Roots Radio Live, and I'm Jan Hall. So Hallie McEwen, it's great to have you join us today. We're having a wonderful conversation about the 2021 Hillside Festival Girls and Guitars songwriting course. Now, this was all virtual, right? So you didn't actually get a chance to meet with uh, Marie and Doris in person. Yeah, it was all all virtual. And since I'm just finishing up my last semester for my undergraduate degree, I guess I would have never even been able to do it if it wasn't virtual. So, yeah. So let's talk about you and your music. I always love talking to artists about the songs they're writing. And I've had a chance to watch the two videos you made for Hillside Festival. We're going to watch those in a few moments. But uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started in music, because you, I, you know, you. What I love when I was reading your bio, I was like, "Wow, she's really, uh, you know, she really knows what she wants from the point of view of getting involved in the arts." So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I grew up in Toronto, and I was usually as a kid, I really was into musical theater. So my dad helped me get into different musical theater programs. I did, you know, choir growing up my whole life as well as singing lessons. I just have always, always loved to sing. But this past summer, I decided that maybe I could start writing my own music, which isn't something that I ever thought I could do before. I don't really know why, but um, I just picked up my guitar and started writing and it was, it was so much fun. And then my boyfriend's mom, uh, heard about this chorus and she gifted it to me for Christmas and it was so amazing because I didn't even think that you know courses like this existed so I was like oh okay cool like something where I could actually take a course on you know navigating writing a song in different ways and you know different structures and that really helped me with um with formatting my songs in a different way because I'd never talked to anyone about it. I'd never really shared my music with anyone. So this was a great opportunity to get out there and share my music with people in such a great group of women who were so supportive and had really good feedback. So it was awesome to be in that setting for the first time ever sharing my music. It was and great. I think you're still a student, right? Uh, where, where are you actually at school? So I go to Bishop's University. It's out in Quebec. It's like an hour and a half uh, east of Montreal. So that's one of the benefits from doing a virtual songwriting course that yes. you can obviously take part wherever wherever you are. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as your songs are concerned, I mean, what sort of influences do you have on your music? Or the people at the moment, I imagine <laughs> as you progress, they may change. But who are the yeah. people that you feel really influence the way 
you think about music and the music you enjoy. Mm -hmm, definitely. I, I think more recently, this artist, Julia Jacqueline, I've been absolutely loving her music and I love the way that she writes songs. Uh, definitely City in Color, Joni Mitchell, that kind of, um, that kind of songwriting style I really connect to. And I, I like to listen to how they write music. And I think that that definitely influences my writing as well. So we're going to hear two songs from you today. Now, interestingly, one of the songs I think was the main song from the course. Mm -hmm. I think actually it it developed from maybe several song ideas you were working with. Is that right? Yeah. So some of some of my music, it's funny. I don't really I don't really think of my life, and I think, okay, I'm going to write stories about me and write stories about it. Just kind of whatever comes to my to my head so I was having all these different ideas and I was like oh this could be a cool and interesting concept through this perspective of somebody else looking in on this couple or this relationship and I just started writing and then different songs I know I submitted a couple to the group but I never fully finished those songs so it was nice then it, it just kind of came came into one and I was happy that I could have a finished product in the chorus with all these different ideas and really great feedback from a couple of the women and everybody was just so supportive and so kind and it was really lovely to hear their feedback and suggestions that really helped me shape that song. Oh, that's great. And I think you're working on your first EP, is that right? I am. I have my songs. I just need to find a producer and do all these things because I, I am not really the best at producing my own music. So I'm just kind of searching, searching for that as I go. And then hopefully things will, uh, things will happen. And I'm just really excited to share that with people when it happens. I'm sure it's going to be great. Where do you hope to go with your music? Do you have any ideas? It's always good to, you know, have aspirations for the future. Yeah. Uh, where would you like to go with it? Definitely, I think my biggest drawback is my nerves. I think that I I think that I get really psyched out. I always have even on stage and performances. It's like I'll be okay for the day and then just before I go on, my heart is like beating and that really affects my voice. So I just I just get super super choked up. So I think I need to do more open mics and just put myself out there, but I know with COVID that's been hard. Um but I've never I've never done that before, especially my own music so I'm just excited to kind of do those open mics see where things go I don't really have too much of like a plan I just would love to be able to actually record and share it with people um that I my family and friends and anybody else who would like to hear so that's that's kind of my kind of my mindset now that's great that's a good place to be at the present moment do you have any final thoughts on the course uh being involved with it I know you know I I'm always excited to talk to people from uh, hillside about the girls and guitars program generally but specifically the songwriting course because as they state you know they're really trying to level this playing field as far mm -hmm. as uh, gender balance is concerned in music definitely i think that if anyone were to ask i would encourage any person who is interested and even not just in taking it and learning different ways about writing songs and different structures and it's just i think the biggest thing is that it's just such a supportive group of women and people and i just really found myself feeling safe to share my music because it wasn't something that i'd done before so i was happy to actually be able to be like okay it's good it's okay even if things don't really work out i have just such great constructive feedback and really in a really supportive space so i think that anybody who's interesting i would interested i would definitely recommend taking this course next year and the years to come that's great well hopefully it won't have to be virtual but even if it yes <laughs> It will still be good. It's been mm -hmm. great to have you join us. Let's listen to those songs now. This is Hallie McEwen, specially recorded for the Hillside Inside Festival this year uh, with two songs. And Thank thanks, Hallie. We really enjoyed having you with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. My name is Hallie McEwen and I'm so excited to be here today at Hillside Inside. I'm a part of Girls and Guitars and it has been an absolute amazing experience working with all these wonderful women and I'm just so happy that I'm here. And this is really the first time that I've ever shared and performed any of my music for anyone. So this is really exciting and yeah, uh, this first song is called Vices. I hope you enjoy. She 
takes care of him as she falls to the bedroom floor. He sits there watching while she collects the little that's left of her. She waits for him to act and come to his senses once again. As for him, well, he's high as a kite for the two of them. Vices, oh, these vices, as he calls them. Lost self control, lost all control, this house she That song was kind of a combination of a bunch of different songs that I had been writing for the course. And I just found that this one drew on a lot of different inspiration and then became this song. So that was really interesting how that happened. Um, the next song that I'm going to be singing is called Our Yearly Game. Um, this was song, this is one of the first songs that I ever wrote actually. And I was really interested in the concept of trying to have one solid idea or theme. So I thought maybe seasons or months of the year. So this song is a bunch of different months in the year, uh, just wrapped up in one story. So yeah, so it's called Our Yearly Game. I hope you enjoy. January you told me we could make it through anything But now 
it's February and the days are turning gray. March is days away and I'm afraid you've given up. April showers bring me flowers, reminding me you forgot. Thank you so much. It has been an absolute pleasure to perform for all of you, and I hope you are all doing well and keeping safe. All the best. That was Hallie McEwen with two songs uh, that she recorded for Hillside Inside. The first vice is obviously one that she recorded during the Hillside Girls and Guitars songwriting course. And, you know, I obviously I, I, I do radio because I, I love the medium. But one of the things I love about the medium is being able to talk to people getting started in their careers. And I think that's one of the things that this course does so well is it's a great place for people to, to develop some confidence and to say that, I can't talk highly enough, not just about everything that the Hillside Festival does, because as I've said before, they really do walk the talk, but they, they really are trying to make a difference and trying to, to get us to much more of a gender balance, because there are some festivals out there that sadly that are, are so terribly skewed towards uh, male performers. So it's great to, to see um, you know, people working hard to bring gender balance into music and you know, not just performing, I mean, you know, helping people develop careers in all aspects of the music business. Now, it's my great pleasure to welcome to Folk Roots Radio Live now, Missy Bauman. How are you doing Hello. today, Missy? I'm doing so good. It's great to, to talk to you again. Missy and I actually had a little interview in 2016 because she was a member of the Folk Music Ontario Developing Artists Program. It was actually called the Youth Program at that time. I get a chance every year to chat to 
the young performers in that program, there's usually five of them, and they are uh, they're set up with um, experienced uh, artists from the Ontario folk community, and they spend the weekend uh, working together and uh, talking about their careers, working on a performance uh, during that. And it was great to to get to to meet Missy then. And uh, Missy, it's just really great to have you join us today. I'm just so pleased uh, that you are able to to be with us. Mm -hmm. I learned that you'd actually done this course twice. Is yeah, that right? That's true. I did it. I did it once in 2017. And I, I did another songwriting course with Hillside as well um, about writing protest songs. So I've done three courses with them total. And they've all been awesome. You know, that, that's interesting because, you know, you are someone who Marie mentioned, Marie Zimmerman, the executive director from Hillside, one of the facilitators for Girls and Guitars songwriting course, mentioned that. Uh, you you put out your I think your first album uh, in 2020, so last year, and yeah, so that was my second album. My first. Oh, that was your second album. That's what Girlhood was the first one. Was that right? 2017. Yeah, and then yeah, no, yeah. that's great. And Sweet, I think, was 2020, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So um, what is it about doing songwriting courses that you love? I mean, is it, is it you know, because you would think, well, you know, you've been making music for a while. You know, is this something you really need to do? Is it is it something you just need to keep working at, do you think? It's oh, yeah, I think songwriting, you can never perfect it. You can always get better at doing it. There's there's benefits for any songwriter to sit in a room with people and and be vulnerable and make sure that your heart is saying what it needs to say. It's being communicated properly. And I I love the feedback that I get. And But the thing that like really, really makes them for me is the community and the people that you meet. We all inspire each other. I have friends for life that I've met through that. And it's, yeah, it's just a really special part of being an artist is bettering your craft. And yeah, I'll I'll never never stop trying to do that. That's for sure. No, that, that that is great. That that's just a great attitude. How would you describe your music? Um, I I say it's it's alternative folk. I I would say singer songwriter, but it's so broad now. It's hard to pinpoint genres. I I write folk music, but not not traditional. I write very very personal music that is about me and my stories to share and it's very sad so I call it I call it sad sad alt folk <laughs> well that's funny because I, I was just uh, when I was checking out your website uh, before we actually uh, got together today I was just you know I was on missybowman.com just to it's always good to get as much information as you can about an artist before you interview them obviously and you know you describe your music I think in as dreamy drug folk but also folk music with fangs so i think you really you, you want to try and unhook people in right is that the idea that you know maybe they start off with a song that's oh that sounds that sounds very interesting and then maybe there's a little bit of a you know maybe a twist in there is that how it normally goes for you yeah at those those two turns i find them so cute and I, I i just need to say that i play folk music it's not what you think it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a little weird gonna have some weird stuff in it and <laughs> yeah a couple of my friends said that and my my friend Sam Boer who's who plays in the lifers wrote my bio and he came up with that folk music with fangs and I I do have fangs my two canines are really big so <laughs> well, it's, just, I, yeah. it's so cute I love it yeah well Sam will get a big thumbs up from me because it's I, I love I love that sort of great descriptive term because it it, it intrigues you and that's the whole point You've, you're a veteran of songwriting courses now, so I'm going to ask you for some tips for other people who may be just starting out or maybe need a refresher course themselves. So uh, just before we get to listen to your songs, uh, you any tips you want to share with people? Sure. I, I think the biggest thing about songwriting is when inspiration comes to you, you have to answer, period. It means leave the room, sing it into your phone, write it down. They don't always come by. If you ask the universe for an idea, it will come. You have to answer. You have to get it down. And and that's that's it. Like it, it does help to have friends. It does help to have feedback. But as long as as you want to create and you create when the calling comes, 
that's the best thing you can do, I think. Well, let's listen to your songs just now. This is Bissy, Missy Bauman, uh, recorded live for the virtual Hillside Inside Festival that took place this past festival, uh, this past February, excuse me. And we're going to listen to those songs just now. You're listening to Folk Roots Radio Live, and I'm Jan Hall. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the Missy Bauman portion of the show. Um, I'm here with Girls and Guitars, which is a songwriting program that Hellside runs for the winter. Um, this is my second time taking this course, so I'm going to play two songs. The first that I wrote um, over the past couple weeks, and then the second that I wrote my first time a few years ago. Um, the song is called Before You. Myself on glass, that photograph I kept of you. I cannot relax, a fire burning wildly blue. So I waited up till sunrise, cause I thought it made me brave. And I don't wanna be the one to say that everything is changed. so long since I played a show. I'm getting nervous. I'm getting stage fright. <laughs> Even though it's just me and you here, folks. Um, the song is called Two Sisters. Um, and it was on an album I put out um, last summer, so August 2020. Um, it's something really close to my heart and hard to share. So I'm just going to play it. <laughs> I was 
nine, but I pretend it was not. It's been a couple of years now, though I still remember somehow. Through all the times I've tried erasing you from my mind. But I bet you can guess that I never was the same Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> That was Missy Bauman, absolutely fabulous. Two songs that were recorded live for Hillside Inside, which took place this past February. Uh, beautiful songs and both written for Hillside Girls and Guitars in the songwriting course. I just think that's awesome. I should also mention that the song we listened to before, the Two Sisters song, was the winner of Folk Music Ontario's Songs from the Heart Award. And it was a finalist in the International John Lennon Songwriting Competition and was nominated for an award from the Canadian Songwriting Hall of Fame. And I don't know if you can tell I'm excited, but I am. That is just wonderful. Now, it's my great pleasure to swap Missy Bowman over and bring in Tanya Joy, Hello. who is another wonderful songwriter. How are you doing, Tanya? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm very good. Great to have you guys join us. And, you know, it's funny. It's like this really does bring me back to the old days because I would say when I was on the radio and when I first started, home, you know, I'm, I think I'm I'm overloading. You know, it's just <laughs> so much wonderful energy. And the interesting thing about doing your interviews 
virtually. Uh, you still get the energy that you do in the studio. And, and maybe, I don't know if that's coming through to the people listening at home, but I really feel that uh, mm -hmm. even though we're not actually in the studio together, but I still, I still get to feel wonderful energy. So I really want to, to thank you all for spending time with us today. We are talking about the Hillside Festival. Girls and Guitars songwriting course took place in February, facilitated by executive director from Hillside Festival, Marie Zimmerman, and wonderful Guelph-based songwriter, Doris Falkins. Tanya Joy, you're from Uxbridge. You've been making music for a little while. I think you're released your first EP, I'll Be Around, in 2013. So tell us a little bit about you and your music. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, it's been a little while. I, I started music a little bit late in life, actually. So 2013 was my first release, my first opportunity to publish my songs and record in a studio setting. And um, since then, I've been writing a lot um, like Missy, uh, spending a lot of time working with other songwriters, co-writing, taking courses to, you know, hone my craft and and uh, take another perspective uh, at the way I write and and uh, opportunity to get the creative juices flowing and and get to the heart of what the stories the stories that need to be told. Um, and I've just started recording and releasing music for a follow-up EP um, that will come out a little bit later this year. So um, it's I've taken this time during the, the uh, pandemic to focus in on my music, and it, I've been very lucky um, to have that time. Does that really feel good for you? I mean, you know, because... You know, I, I guess, you know, because this is what I do, I always look and say, what, 2013? And then I think you released The Drought as a single in 2020, right? Um, uh, it was actually just earlier this year in February. Oh, oh, earlier this year. Okay. Yes, yes. And then and then the the next song we're going to uh, play, which As I'm well. mm -hmm. I'm going to get you to, to tell us a little bit about in a second. But, um, you know... Do you see like the course as a way to kind of kickstart your songwriting? Is it is that the the benefit of being around other people that are, are working with the same puzzle? Well, it depends on on the course. Um, they're they're all some of them are structured a little differently. In some cases, you can bring songs that are already. In most cases that I've experienced, you you bring um, some songs that are already started, and you sort of workshop them and and see where you know things could be crafted a little bit better or make sure that the the story is landing appropriately or correctly and um in this case with um girls and guitars we actually wrote from scratch in the course in the four weeks and that's the first time i i have done that so that um was a new opportunity um and I was very excited to be able to do the course and doing it virtually really allowed me to do it because I'm about an hour and a half from Guelph. So it would have been a little bit more challenging to do it, um, you know, without the virtual uh, platform. So. So you were lucky that way. I was. Yeah. So you've written a really powerful song, um, a really powerful song. I was really impressed when I uh, watch the video, which we're going to watch in a, a few seconds. Uh, I think you've also uh, polished it up as a release, but um, tell us about the song and your motivation to write it. Well, um, thank you, first of all, for your kind words. Um, Planks and Marietta is a song that uh, was sitting with me for a while um, last year was a, a pretty dark year um, with the death of George Floyd and um, the the focus uh, and the unveiling of all of the issues of systemic racism and um, that are still is still prevalent today. Um, so the beginning of the pandemic was a big uh, was a struggle for many, and um, I, I was trying to, you know, work out those emotions myself during that time. Um, but there was also an incident that happened last year in my town here in Uxbridge um, that hit me again with another wave of emotion. And I had been stewing on it for a while 
and hoping that I'd be able to address it in some way. There were some great things that happened in town here to address it with uh, with a group of people, um, you know, doing doing like a, a peaceful stand in and 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 things like not not for George Floyd. Sorry. Um, so there were things happening because of um, the uprising that after George Floyd's death, that was sort of along the same messaging. But this incident had happened in in Uxbridge and it hadn't, nobody really knew about it. And I just came across it um, innocently on Facebook through some friends who live in the area. And so it, it sat with me for a while and I I was hoping I would be able to be able to respond. I hadn't been able to respond to anything um, from last year. And so when I met Doris and Marie and the group, um, the first thing they did was create a space for us to write something really personal. Um, and as soon as they opened the door for that, that was the first thing that came into my mind. This, the Planks and Marietta's to inter, uh, an intersection of two streets where this uh, racist incident had happened. And um, so I knew that was the song that I needed to write. And it's a very, you know, challenging topic for me, but um, they, they created that space and I was so grateful. And I think we should mention that since um, the songwriting course, you've actually finished up this song, right? And I think yes. For, um, yes. tell us a little bit about who you've been working with because I, I wonderful producer, but I'm going to let you. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, very fitting for um, a song that was written from a course that is challenging the gender imbalance um, to be able to produce this with a woman, um, Hill Kurkudis, who I'd met earlier in, two, in 2020 through another songwriting course. Um, we had started a project already recording other material for this EP I mentioned. And as Planks and Marietta unfolded and I under, under, understood where it was going and that it was developing into, you know, a, a story that needed to be told and having Black History Month the following month come, you know, the alignment of all of those things. I, I brought the song to a uh, hill and I was like, can we do this? Can we, you know, produce this and release it within a couple of weeks, which is exactly what happened. So I, I was, um, you know, it was an honor to work with her on that uh, material. She's, she's working with a lot of indigenous artists. She's, she's works in the roots space a lot. She's a very talented, very talented multi-instrumentalist artist and producer and what a joy to work with her on this yeah and it's high five definitely yeah <laughs> definitely absolutely wonderful when we we'll, when will we expect the new ep do you know when that will be ready we're looking we're targeting uh september so i have a, a new release coming at the end of this month um and there may be another single before before we gear up for the EP. So I'm very excited. It's been a, a great year, this program. Um, I would take it again in a heartbeat. Um, the, the songs that came out of it with the other ladies that I had the pleasure to meet and collaborate with and give feedback to were, were just incredible. And I do think something special is happening um, when this opportunity is given to us to, to, to come at things from a different perspective and tell our truths. No, that's great. It's been real pleasure to be able to talk to you today. I'm certainly looking forward to hearing what you uh, come up with next. If you want to learn more about Tanya's music, uh, you can visit her online at tanyajoy.com. Let's play that song now. This is Tanya Joy with Planks and Marietta, recorded especially for the Hillside Festival 2021. You are on Folk Roots Radio Live. I'm Jan Hall, and I just have to play this song for you. It is so powerful. Sit back and enjoy. Tanya Joy with Planks and Marietta. I'm Tanya Joy, a singer-songwriter from Uxbridge, Ontario. I'm so happy to be joining you here today along with the Hillside community. So thank you for having me. I'm going to sing a new song I wrote thanks to the Hillside Girls and Guitars program. This mentorship gave me a safe space to write a song I needed to write 
to join the conversation around race and injustice. This song means a lot to me and I hope it means a lot to you too. It's called Planks and Marietta. I see white picket fences and pink lemonade street signs and headlines that won't change a thing my heart is heavy with shallow breathing a black light shattered for all the world to see planks and marietta your history repeats planks in marietta there's stains in your streets planks in marietta your grass grows green what else do you hide behind your skinned knees white picket lines and red spray paint Crosswalks and blind spots, they're whispering. Your slurs and your curse words written in the street. Black lives shattered underneath your feet. Planks in Marietta. Your history repeats planks in Marietta. There's stains in your streets, planks in Marietta. Your grass grows green. What else do you hide behind your skin knees? Your sticks and your stones never broke my bones, but your name still haunts me planks in marietta your history repeats planks in marietta there's stains in your streets planks in marietta your day grows long it echoes on your sidewalks and rolls off your tongue planks in marietta planks in marietta is changing Wow, that was just amazing. Um, that is a song that definitely stays with you. I am definitely sure about that. Absolute pleasure to be able to uh, talk to you all at the moment. Just absolutely fabulous. I nearly forgot Marie. How are you doing, Marie? <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I have chills. Yeah, yeah. That, that song always does it to me. Yeah. When I listened to that song the first time, I thought, Oh my God, what a great song. And mm -hmm. and I, I went out for my walk afterwards singing Planks and Marietta. And um, I do have a tendency when I've got headphones on to sometimes sing. And you know, if anybody knows when you're outside singing, when you've got your headphones on, no, you don't realize everybody else can hear you. So they were <laughs> wondering why I was saying those things. But it's been a, a wonderful pleasure as always to to talk about this course i'm lucky to have been able to to get to do it again and what can i say i hillside festival i just love it to death um you know i i can't speak highly enough about how they walk the talk and i will just keep telling that to everybody uh this course really does epitomize uh where we need to go to to try and make sure that we're doing everything um, you know, to to achieve a, a gender balance in, in all festivals and all aspects of the music business. I know we're in the midst of the pandemic when everything uh, comes back afterwards. Uh, it would be great to, to see more of a balance. And it was wonderful that, you know, we got to mention Hilke Kortis 
um, in this interview because, you know, women producers, we need so many more of them. And it's great that, you know, one of the other good things that's come out of a terrible time is the fact that people have been incredibly creative in their own time and their own space. And so, you know, I am, I'm really looking forward to seeing what music comes. Uh, once we get through this. But enough of me. I do want to give you all a chance uh, for some final thoughts about the course and moving forward. I'm going to start with you, Doris. Do you have any final thoughts you want to share? Maybe there's people watching this video, um, you know, thinking about whether they want to do this course next year or the year after that. Yeah, um, we use the term girls and guitars primarily for the alliteration. Um, but I don't want people to go away thinking it's only for young women. It's for any woman songwriter, whether they're old or young or in between. And um, we've had everything from, you know, for example, Moscow apartment, early teens to women who have had careers are now looking to tap into another form of creativity later in life. So I'm, I'm hoping to access all <laughs> levels of songwriter, whether you're beginner or, or veteran. And um, I hope that we will continue this. It's been great to be here today. Thank you, Jan, for having us. And you, we can't talk highly enough about what a supportive environment it is. I mean, that, that really, really comes through. Yeah, you know, that's mm -hmm. great. Well, it's, it's wonderful that you and Marie are so committed to, to making this happen. Missy, um, you know, you're a veteran. I, I don't know if you get a frequent flyer card for doing this <laughs> twice, but, um, you know, uh, final thoughts on this course and girls and guitars generally. Yeah. I'm, I'm just so grateful for the program and, and being here today. Thanks for having us today because I, I really want every, every woman out there to, to just try and to dive into that creative side of them. doesn't matter if, you know, like you write the next hit or whatever, it just, let your heart communicate. And yeah, there's a reason There's a reason I keep coming back to do it. It's a really, really good program and I'm really grateful that I can do it. That's great. Tanya? Oh, um, I would like to say, uh, I would like to speak to something Marie mentioned earlier, um, that, di that women write different songs, um, especially when they're given that space to do so um, and not fall into what we're, we're used to hearing, um, you know, whether it's a love song or um, a pop song or what, whatever, what, you know, I feel like this course, what stands out to me was the opportunity to, to dive deep um, and, and speak from a personal place. And I think there was just a bit of safety that just naturally came um, with in a, a room with women, um, we didn't have to filter ourselves. Um, so not only do they bring that space and provide that opportunity, but the tools that I will take away, um, the very specific tools, um, thanks to Doris's experience, um, the very specific tools that were given to us. And you know, we learn from writing our own songs, but we also learn from each other's songs. Um, I think that was invaluable. So. Um, it was one of the greatest experiences of my lockdown period so far. And I, I would highly encourage others to, to explore um, songwriting and, and this course. And I'm very grateful to both uh, Doris and Marie um, and for the newfound friendships and relationships I have. Thank you so much. And thank you for having us today, Jen. No, it's my, absolutely my pleasure. And obviously uh, people realize I, I do love doing this, but it, it's just, wonderful to have you all with us today. Marie, I'm going to give you the last word. Oh my. Well, I think that um, one of the things that we can't forget um, about this course is that um, women come to it, um, they, they are very vulnerable. And so it's really important that we create a, a safe and supportive space, but we wouldn't be able to do that without these other women songwriters who are willing to sort of say, yeah, that's a great thing that you just said and let's focus on this particular word or this phrase or this chorus or whatever and let's see if we can get you to be more specific here or whatever so there's this incredible helpfulness that that uh, they bring um to the course but i it's also about bravery they are very courageous we start talking um in the first class about being honest and and what it means to to be honest and it's really hard for any human being 
to be honest, um, but really hard. Like if you look at Hallie's song, one of them, the song she wrote was about addiction. Um, Missy is, is writing about, uh, one of her songs is about abuse and Tanya is writing about racism. So these, but they all approach them from a very personal point of view, but they have cultural uh, ramifications and ripples. And so I feel incredibly proud of that. But but you have to understand that that takes several layers of bravery, right? Um, to first of all, put something down on paper that is about you and about your experience and like, oh my God, people can hear this and see this. And then it's something that's an issue, a, a really important cultural issue. Like that, if the personal wasn't scary enough, reaching out into the public and saying, this has been my experience and I know it's probably been yours too, or you've, you know, you know about this, like that's, that's a tough thing to do. So I just want all of us to sort of applaud and recognize that uh, art is about, um, you know, plumbing your own depths and telling your truth and telling your story so that other people can hear it and feel supported um, or feel uh, challenged. And uh, all of the students have done that in their own ways in this course. So I feel, I feel grateful for their bravery. And I feel transformed many, many times. That's a perfect way to finish. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely wonderful. I want to thank you all for joining us today. It's just been an absolute pleasure. But I would be remiss, Marie, if I didn't ask a little question, uh, mm. Hillside, festival this summer can you tell us anything about how it's going to be what what you're planning well we're planning <laughs> we're planning um we're planning a lot of a lot of things and uh we're trying to plan it within the uh framework of public health and and safety so i can't say much at, at this point uh obviously um because i don't want to uh give people hope and I don't want to disappoint people either. So I, I can't really say a lot right now. No, but that's good. I mean, but I mean, I'm already excited, but I mean, there will be, <laughs> Hillside Festival will be, will be back in some form this summer. Yeah, yes, in some form. Yeah. <laughs> Go to hillsidefestival.ca, follow the festival online, sign up for their newsletter. They always put out wonderful newsletters and they're very informative. And if you're watching this from BC or Quebec or wherever and you're intrigued, it is a fabulous festival. And one year you need to come and visit, as I hope that everybody, all of the musicians that are with me today will have, you know, get the chance to, to play. I know you've all played Hillside Inside, but get a chance to, to enjoy what is just a great community festival. Marie Zimmerman, Doris Falkins, Missy Bowman, Tanya Joy, and Hallie McEwen, I wanted to thank you for spending the time with us today. I'm Jan Hall from Folk Roots Radio. I'm just ready to wrap up. All I would like to say is this has been great fun. I would love to hear from you. You can contact me through the website at folkrootsradio.com. We have several more live streams set up to come in the, the next week or so. You know, we, we're doing interviews all the time. The difference is that I used to do video interviews all the time, but now that you can actually um, watch them and um, as well as hear them, which is kind of cool. It is very much just like being in the studio, watching me make mistakes with the controls. But as you can see, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty skilled at what I do these days and I have lots of fun. So please stay safe and well out there. It was, I really appreciate everybody uh, that popped by to see us today. I will be back. I think with Jeffrey Straker from Regina in Saskatchewan on Tuesday for another live stream interview. We have lots more coming up and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And thanks for joining us at Folk Roots Radio. And please, if you get a chance, we would love you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, because I think when we get to 100 people subscribing, I get to put Folk Roots Radio in the name. Uh, which would be really important moving forward. So thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everybody, and stay safe.